now he's going into his so that's kind of his assessment and this is based on his experience which we're about to get into and he's, he does more assessments there's more more he talks more about what he learns about leadership as a whole mm-hmm. but you have to kind of understand what he went through and figure out where he learned it from the first his first command in battle here we go back to the book we were to attack this rugged hill from the west with the fifth Wiltshires on our right and the fourth Wiltshires in reserves. The, the approach march to our forming up place had been a nightmare of swirling abrasive dust, shelling, and the stench of exhaust fumes from the tanks which transported us forward. We were due to attack at 1500 hours with A Company leading on the right and B Company on the left. We followed B Company. B Company moved off quickly with our company deployed about 300 yards behind. Their forward platoons had barely crossed the stream when concentrated Spandau fire came from the front and from both flanks. So Spandau fire, this is kind of a generic term that the Brits used for German machine guns. They're primarily talking about the MG42, which is a big belt-fed machine gun. Very similar to a modern what we have M60 or Mark 48 machine gun a big heavy belt belt fed machine gun Mm. Which lays down the insane amounts of suppressive fire So here we go. They're getting hit from both flanks from with these machine guns back to the book There must have been about 12 machine guns firing at one time This devastating display of firepower stopped the battalion dead in its tracks there was no way forward or around it and no way to retire some of the guns had engaged D company over the heads of B company and private Morrison 18 platoon was killed so there's his first guy lost I I like this the way he starts off this next sentence here first word powerless so he's in his first combat situation. He's got one man killed, and how does he feel powerless? Here we go. Powerless and crouching in a hedgerow, I tried to identify the Spandau positions. This proved impossible as they still kept up their crushing display of firepower. In my ignorance, I expected that the enemy machine gunners would soon expend their ammunition. They did not, nor did they in dozens of subsequent battles. So he's waiting for them to stop shooting. They don't. It just keeps coming. Captain Scamell, commanding A Company, was severely wounded. Major Thomas, commanding B Company, was killed. Their companies were badly cut up. On our right, the 5th Wiltshires had fared no better. With their CO killed and casualties mounting, their attack also foundered. As the afternoon turned to evening, shelling and mortaring increased, much of it passing over our heads, thus isolating us from the reserve battalion. So the the Germans are mortaring over their heads so that the reserve battalion can't get to them. Mm -hmm. Shortly before dark, a troop of tanks arrived, one of which was able to cross the stream and give us some brave, close support. Undoubtedly, it increased our morale, but it was not enough to get the whole attack underway again. Any movement by B Company to our front brought down instant and concentrated Spandau fire. The same applied to us a few hundred yards to their rear. Fortunately, the enemy did not seem to have any anti-tank guns, so our armored friends were comparatively safe. But the fact remained that about 12 Spandos had halted a battalion attack without our locating even one of them. That's what suppressive fire does. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what a, a big machine gun does. You got twelve big machine guns that's stopping seven hundred people from moving. That's called suppressive fire. That's why you know when you heard Roger Hayden talk about how how many heavy weapons they how many machine guns they'd carry. Mm. They had, I think they had nine out of a platoon of fourteen. That's yeah. why. Yeah, yeah. As dusk fell, a new plan was made. C and D companies would advance in single file through A and B companies and, using the cover of darkness, infiltrate the enemy position. Once through them, we would climb to the top of the hill and consolidate. A cold and damp mist descended, which, with fading light, gave us welcome cover, but also wretched discomfort. We were still in shirt sleeves, which became damp from the sweat of our exertion, climbing the steep lower slopes. Alert, with pistol in hand, I anticipated a sudden brush with an enemy post. 
not a shot was fired. By some miracle, we passed right through their positions without being de- detected. Our luck had changed. So you're going to see quite a bit of that is as they what the Germans were doing at this point defending hard but then instead of staying and dying in most cases they would retreat mm. and so they'd fight really hard for a while and then retreat and they'd advance if they had an opportunity but you're gonna see a lot of that back to the book we now had to advance across a large orchard so I deployed the platoon with two sections up and urged them forward as fast as possible Suddenly, in the middle of the orchard, we came across a young girl in a clean white dress sitting with her back to an apple tree sketching. Now, I just talked about this at the muster, the random things that happen in combat, and this is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And how do you train for that? How how would you ever, if you're running a battle problem to train people, what are you going to do? Put a white girl in a white dress and then sitting with her back to a tree sketching? doesn't make any sense Mm. how do you deal with it back to the book she seemed quite oblivious to the mortar fire and 18 platoons warlike appearance how to stop pretty young girls from interfering with battle had not been part of my training as an officer cadet nor had it appeared on the curriculum of any battle schools which without exception had despaired of my future as an infantry soldier fortunately there was a farmhouse beside the orchard and it had a cellar where she was persuaded to shelter while we got on with our battle. 